Hi, I'm Veronica Brandon Miller. And I'm Kelly Davis Strasbaugh. And this is Goodwill Minnesota's Good News. Where we get to share with you some of the good that's happening in our community. And there's a lot of good that's happening. And in fact, today's show is going to be fabulous with great people. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been talking about our Giving Partner Challenge. And so we just want to remind you guys of that, that that's happening. We are doing the Good Wheels. We're partnering with Meals on Wheels Plus. Um, go to our website, experiencegoodwill.org. There's our logo. You can see all of the companies that have signed up to have the, the Goodwill's bike at their location. Employees are getting involved. It's been amazing. And as always, the 2015 Giving Partner Challenge, Challenge is made possible by the Community Foundation of Sarasota County, the Patterson Foundation with the support of the William G. and Marie Selby Foundation, the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, Manatee Community Foundation, and the Herald Tribune Media Group. That's right. And without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. Yeah. So definitely check out our Good Wheels campaign on experiencegoodwill.org. Yep, and we have a picture of Seaside Bank. The folks at Seaside Bank were great, and they were oh. riding the bike, and they were just so awesome, and we love them. There um, they are. There I mean, they Steve, are. Stephen Altier had his fancy we sunglasses on. We love Steve Altier. On. <laughs> so keep, keep, um, keep up with us on that so you guys can, so you don't miss anything. Oh, yeah. It was at Kaiser University. Yeah. BMO was, Harris Bank. It's all over. iHeartMedia. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Remax Alliance Group. Oh, I have to mention road that. 50 miles love over that. achievers, but we love it. <laughs> um, okay. But before we start... Did you know that Goodwill Minnesota has bookstores? Mm -hmm. We actually have three, um, one in Venice, one in, in front of Tara mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, in Manatee on 7D, and also- One in Sarasota. And one in Sarasota mm -hmm. on Clark Road. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, and you can see pictures right now. So if you're looking for books, definitely check out our bookstores. And what's great about our bookstores is we also partner with 220 organizations around the community and we go into the school system and donate books. Yeah, we love it. And so um, we actually have a Good Readers program and it was started as part of our outreach um, our outreach program, the Good Neighbor program. So the Good Reader program, we take books that have been donated and we give them to students at Title I schools. So not only do we donate to the library, mm -hmm. we also have these students that now can have a book to take home. And I think the ratio is really crazy. Um, in other areas, it's like 15 books to one child. That's a typical ratio. Mm -hmm. But for these students, it might be one book to, you know. Yeah. And there's a picture of our Goodwill ambassadors mm -hmm. going to the Title I schools and reading to them. And you want to feel, yeah, you want to feel like, you're very blessed. That's that's a great thing to get involved in. And you just recently helped yep. pick out books for who? Oscar Shear State Park is having an event um, for book literacy, and you can find that information on our Facebook page. We're going to be sharing that. So we've donated um, around 50 books. So if there's going to be an event, you come and bring a book. It's going to be a book swap, and then all those books will be donated back. It's really great. We have some awesome people in this community. Good news. And more good news, we have two fabulous guests. First, we have Dawn Stanhope, president of the Boys and Girls Club of Manatee County, mm -hmm. and also Katrina Bellamauer. I love that yeah. name. Bellamauer. Executive director of Family Partnership Center. So thank you guys for being on. Thank you. Thanks. So we'll start with you, Dawn. And you're new to the Boys and Girls Club of Manatee. I am. I've been here almost one year, Aww. and I love every minute of it. It's such a joy to be working with children and knowing that you're having a huge impact in their lives. Right. So tell us more about the Boys and Girls Club. Sure. So our mission is to enable all young people, especially those that need us most, to reach their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens. And we do this by focusing in three core areas. We look towards academic success, good leadership, and um, citizenship, and also healthy lifestyles. So we serve all school-age children, Mantee County, we have currently 4,100 members, and we have seven sites. We have two traditional clubs, one over in Palmetto, one called the DeSoto Club in Bradenton on 34th Street, and then we have five that are school-based, two elementary schools, two middle schools, and one high school. And, you know, our kids are really struggling these days. There's a lot of things going on in the community, and it's going to take the entire community to wrap their arms around our children and really protect them and help them to be safe, to feel nurtured, to feel valued, and help them to achieve their goals. In Manatee County, there are 60% of the kids in school are free or reduced lunch mm. students. So when you talk about the Title I schools and bringing books in, you have no idea 
the challenges that families have and, and those little things that you do make such a huge impact. In fact, we're part of a coalition with the United Way in partnership with Patterson Foundation and many others to look at early childhood reading and what can we do to make a difference on that. So third grade reading level is an initiative that if you're not on target by third grade, your chances of being able to continue on at pace in school and graduate on time significantly decrease. And for many of our students, English is not their first language. So when they're coming into school, they not only have just that regular struggle of getting, you know, kind of acclimated and, and learning language, but then trying to actually comprehend and use those skills. So we really see the value of the work we do in partnership with the schools and with the parents to make that difference. Um, very low cost programs at Boys and Girls Clubs. We scholarship folks in if they can't afford the monthly fees, which are very small to begin with. And we run full programming after school and in the summertime. Um, and we also have extended teen, night, teen nights at our Palmetto and DeSoto Club. Those are very important because when you think about it, kids after school, in a lot of cases, if they're not doing sports or something, they may be going home to an empty household. And for teenagers in particular, mm -hmm. who knows where they are? You are asking for trouble. You yeah. bet. Asking I for had trouble. two, and Whew. I'm telling you, <laughs> it was a daily challenge. So, um, you know, running programs where they can stay even later into the evening has been really beneficial. And, you know, giving them opportunities to advance is so important. When we talk about academic success, it's not only getting through high school, but what do they want to achieve after high school? Mm -hmm. What kind of career path are they thinking about? Um, have they even looked at what the different opportunities are? If they're going to college, have they put in their applications? Do they understand how to apply for scholarships? We help with all of those things. Um, and we really, you know, to us, it's very important that the kids are nurtured and that they're treated as individuals at the club. So you might think, you know, 4,100 kids, that's a lot of kids. How do you connect with them? But if you think about a child when they come into a club and what that day might look like, the moment they walk in the door, there's someone right there that greets them, gives them a high five, they know right. everyone by name, you know, and then they might go from there into the homework help room and spend about an hour working on their studies and getting the individual help that they might need. From there, they might go to the games room, play a game of pool or carpet ball, which I had never heard of until I came to the club. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. It's fun. <laughs> and they make up their own rules, oh, but it's all cool. And My husband you know, probably plays that a lot because he yeah. makes he cheats all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they have a lot of fun, but at the same time, they're learning. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really exciting about it. You kind of disguise it in a mode of, mode of fun so that they're getting well-rounded education. Mm -hmm. And it's not school after school because it's the club. So it's a little different, you know, kind I of hope vibe. they're not watching that. They just heard that they were being taught. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> under the guise of, you know, <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. And even things like good nutrition. You know, we have wonderful Miss Marty who does our Good Eats program. And she brings the kids in and she teaches them about food from the farm, you know, and, and more things that are fresh, ingredients of how to prepare them. And these kids go home and they start showing their parents, like, hey, look what I can do. And it's awesome because they're getting great nutrition. They understand how their bodies are using it. They're getting their physical exercise as well. So, you know, n there's no typical day. Every day is new and varied and we keep it fresh. Um, you know, and the outcomes are extremely amazing. Our kids have such a high success rate of graduating from high school on time, which one out of five kids right now in America will not graduate from high school on time. It's a big that's problem. Cool. Yeah, that's a crazy statistic. It is. It is. Um, you know, our kids, they don't get into trouble because they have somewhere to be after school. Mm -hmm. They're not left unsupervised. So we have less, you know, um, issues with kids ending up in the juvenile justice system. Mm -hmm. And we also um, are able to help them, again, with furthering education. Mm -hmm. So many of our kids will go on, and whether it's a technical school or an internship or college, they'll go out and they'll be able to find their way, but they get exposed to it early and often, and that makes it less scary for them. We also have a fabulous Youth of the Year program, yes. and we cannot brag okay. enough on our Youth of the Year. This program is a national program for Boys and Girls Club of America, but we do that on a local level as well. They get to go to state competition, they get to meet other Youth of the Year. In fact, this year, I know. they Sarasota had them. Sarasota County. Yes, Sarasota County ended up getting there into the, into the state. And at the, um, 
in um, New York City, they featured Youth of the Year at Times Square. Oh, and they gave me that yeah, gave pic They put pictures up of all the kids. It was awesome. Uh, Veronica's been trying to get her picture up in Times Square. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps sending it in. And, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't there? think you can qualify for Youth of the Year, <laughs> but keep working no. on it. And my husband was in charge in D.C. to take the Youth of the Year when he worked for Boys and Girls Club um, and take them around Capitol That's Hill. Awesome. And yeah. I would volunteer and help during that time. And those stories, I mean, you know, you're... It's not a um, swimming gym, and a lot of people mm. in their mind think of Boys and Girls Club as a swimming gym. It's not exactly right. what Dawn was talking about, all these educational programs. And you see they, a lot of the kids come from nothing, mm -hmm. nothing. And um, there was this one, uh, she won, I think, a few years ago, Youth of the Year, but she was homeless. And she would ask her mom to park the car underneath the lamplight so she could do homework. Oh my gosh. Mm. And, oh my God. See, I, just, I know. I you're, don't, don't <laughs> I stop do talking. this every week just to see if she cries. Stop talking. But, and she graduated valedictorian, mm. um, got a full scholarship. Oh, just meeting these fabulous people that would have never had that helping hand if it wasn't for the Boys and Girls Club. Right. Um, right. Oh, what you guys do is amazing. So yeah, are you doing anything you. for the giving challenge? We are. Uh, you may have heard recently in the news that we had some setbacks with our state funding, and that was for the Boys and Girls Clubs Alliance, which serves 40 clubs throughout the state. Mm -hmm. And so we had to, to kind of retool some things there. And so the giving partner challenge for us this year is a big challenge in terms of seeing if we can rebuild some of what's been lost through that state funding. And so, you know, we really are putting that challenge out to folks to think about our kids and the investment they can make in their future. And, you know, even if they can only give a little bit, that money's being matched. Mm -hmm. exactly. You know, their money's automatically getting doubled if they hadn't made a gift this past year. Yeah. So it can so have if huge you're power. $25 or more, you donate it to the Boys and Girls Club of Manatee County. The Patterson Foundation is matching up to twenty or two hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. So that's fabulous. That's awesome. Right. And bgcmanatee.org, and you can find out additional information. Yes, and we're always looking for great volunteers to come in and work with the kids. That's a really great, fun way like to get that. involved. And you know, when you walk into the clubs and the kids see you, you're like a magnet. Mm -hmm. They they come up to you like you're the the superhero of the day. And if you don't leave there feeling like really special, yeah. then I don't know. You don't have a heart in there, I don't think. <laughs> you wouldn't be coming to the club if that were right, the case, yeah. I guess. So, yeah, we, we certainly appreciate people getting involved. Go to our website and look at what kind of events we have coming up. We're doing a homecoming event in the fall, Aww. as well as having a fashion show. Oh, I cannot oh, wait. Yeah, we'll and to. Goodwill, Minnesota is helping okay. us with that fashion show. So we're excited about that. That's awesome. Again, bgcmanatee.org and... Thank you so much for being on, but we're going to use Thank you me. later, so don't go don't anywhere. Go <laughs> don't leave. <laughs> don't leave. And now Katrina Bellamar. I know, we just want to keep saying it. <laughs> Executive Director of the Family Partnership Center. Tell us about Family Partnership. Yes. Um, first, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Um, basically, our mission is twofold. We are strengthening families and also preventing child abuse, and we do both through parenting education and support. So our focus is really on that parent because we know that they have the most impact and influence over their children. And so our core program is an in-home program where we work with those families one-on-one. -on -one. It's kind of like, we say it's kind of like super nanny without the judgment or British accent. <laughs> so, so Basically, we, we're there for up to six okay. months um, weekly with very skilled, professional, bilingual uh, parenting educators who will help that family really get to where they want to be um, and set individualized goals, which is very important. Um, and with the parenting education, we, we say that it's a twofold mission because we really do serve parents through the entire spectrum of risk, whether it's, you know, you're a brand new mom and you're just bringing that child home and you want to know what to do. Um, or maybe you have a child with a special need or you have a child who's getting kicked out of school because of behavioral issues. We want to be a resource for that family. So in addition to our in-home program, we have a lot of other services that are available to families um, to meet their specific needs for, for their child. Um, we have a musical motion program for parents of preschoolers, which is tons of fun. Basically, they come together and for an hour they do crafts and games and read books and stuff, really just to try and um, help the children reach those developmental milestones, build that support with, that, with the other parents that are there, um, as well as, you know, 
being able to learn from each other, put them in a social atmosphere, kind of prepare them for school, all those things that happen kind of behind the scenes that they don't realize are happening. So that's a, that's a super fun one to watch these little kids do things. Um, the other things that we have are like parents in recovery. So a lot, there were 77 children, if you read the paper last week, there were 77 children removed to Manatee County from their families. So that's, that's a huge jump in statistics right now. Last year there was a 30% increase in the children who were, had verified, sorry, 37, 36% increase in verified, verified child abuse reports. That's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. um, it went from, I think, about 860 to over 1,100. Um, which is huge, and that was just one of the counties, and usually Sarasota is um, pretty, pretty much in line with that. So a lot of them are around addiction. So we have a parents and recovery group to help those families when they are getting reunited with their child or if they haven't been taken away to really learn the skills that they need to know to be um, present with their child and kind of reinforce that relationship again. Um, we also work with teen moms. We work with homeless moms, really. Spanish-speaking, over half the families we serve are, are Spanish-speaking families. Uh, we really just want to be a resource, really, to any parent in the community because it's a huge, it's a huge thing. You know, a lot of times we, we want to take away that guilt that parents feel about everything that they're doing, um, the role that they have in that child's life and how important that is, making sure that they have the skills that they need to be super successful. So that's really what we're about. Um, I'm trying to think of some other statistics. They, one of the statistics in 2011 was it was $64,377 per child per year in foster care, Good. which is huge. That and is. so you talk about supporting an organization that, you know, can significantly reduce that cost to help work with that family one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and again, we're, we're, you know, very skilled at doing that. We're actually one of 80 child abuse present child abuse prevention centers nationally, um, affiliated with the National Exchange Club, um, and using their evidence-based in-home model to make sure that they're very successful in what they're doing. Um, some of our program goals are to build protective factors um, and really just, like I said, to build those skills. Last year we had a 1% recidivism rate. That's a re-abuse rate, those children that were referred from the system. and. You know that's that's very minimal. You know if they've gone back in, into the system again, um, it's been very small portion that have come through our programs that have done that. So I just want to be a resource for everyone out there. What I love about your organization is um, you're you're not just doing a band aid. Mm -hmm. We already know that the child's going to be taken away from their family, and what the county or whatever will say, okay you can have your children back, but you're like, wait, before you get your children back, let's work out a plan. And that is so important because it, it's, it's really helping the whole situation. Because like you said, you don't want it to happen again. And until Absolutely. you work on that core problem, mm -hmm. so what you guys do is amazing. Yeah, we love it. And really, the, we have about 10 to 15 percent that actually are court mandated to take parenting. The rest of the over 1,000 families we serve every year voluntarily come and request services. We'd love to be as popular as Lamaze to where we don't say, just because you take a child home from the hospital doesn't mean that you know what you're doing, and that's okay. It's right. so hard. Parenting is stressful. I talk about the parenting educators. I mean, I've got four kids, so <laughs> my youngest is five and entering kindergarten. Um, but I remember when she was two, and I'm asking questions. I'm like, she's just so obstinate. She just wants what she wants, and I think we can all relate to that. Um, yeah. But I think what was important is that... <laughs> I know. Veronica, at this point, is me. Yeah. everybody <laughs> watching S&M. Yeah. I know. No obstinate. shame, no guilt. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, but we had, you know, it, what was interesting to me is when I talked about the situations that I was going through, um, they really just make you in awe of your child. And so they're like, think about what she's learning through that process. And at two years old, they're really learning to be independent. They're learning to make choices. They're standing up for themselves and things you really want them to do. And you don't want to squash that. You really want to develop that in a way that's healthy for you and healthy for your relationship. So our goal is really just to give parents information on child development, to help them through the process, access to the resources in the community they may need. Um, it's really a, a, a nice wraparound support system. We send referrals. Um, Many, many, many times to other organizations and just making sure that they're connected because that's a huge, huge thing. Now you're in Manatee and Sarasota County. Yes. Do you have yes. offices in both or? Um, our core office is in, our main office is in Manatee County, but we serve families in both communities because it is an in-home program and an on-site program. Like sometimes we'll go into the schools and do workshops on bullying and other things like that. So really it's, we want all of our programs to be in the community and where families can access them. Oh, that's awesome. And information is on your website, which is what? 
familypartnership.org. Perfect. I love Simple. that you said that about the two-year-old, because you always hear about the terrible twos. Mm -hmm. um, my, my child is... Your husband? Seven months. No, I was going to talk about oh. my dog. <laughs> oh. Um, but yeah, my husband is 25. Does that ever stop? The obstinance? No. no. Just You're do close. it already. You're close. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll send him your way. But um, no, I was actually going to talk about my dog. But oh, thanks okay. for saying Kevin instead. Anyway. But I like it because everybody says, oh, terrible twos. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes yeah. there's a way to look at it differently, so I like that you said Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Give them choices. Right. <laughs> so are you doing anything for the Giving Challenge? We are. Super excited about that. Um, our campaign is going to be Change My World because for parents, their pa Aww. parents are the world to their children. Um, and their influence will really change the opportunities that they have in life. So um, not only do we have the matching challenge through Patterson Foundation, which is exciting, also MedExchange is going to put up another matching up to $8,000. Oh, so yeah, very cool. excited for that um, and just to kind of help keep people off our wait list. Sometimes they're on our wait list for two months for our program, which is very sad. So that's kind of our goal this year. Are you um, going to be showing cute pictures or sharing stories? We've got babies, we got kids, oh, babies. all kinds of fun stuff. We'll make you cry, I promise. Oh, good. Uh -huh. yes. Common knowledge down here now. <laughs> and, you know, the, I have to say, SNN does a great job at capturing me when I'm in the <laughs> mid Kim Kardashian <laughs> car. So thanks for that, everybody. So familypartnership.org. And are you looking for volunteers or anything? Always. So Always. we have lots of different opportunities, whether it's working in the office with some of our programs. Um, based on what you want to do, we can probably fit you in. Actually, yeah. What kind of... Going off that, what specifically, what kind of volunteer opportunities do you have? Um, whether we have sometimes, actually right now we do have a new program, program called the Chosen Families Program for Adoptive Families, and we're having to put a lot of tables and things together and rebuild another suite in our building. Um, and so there's lots of like mini construction opportunities for that right now. Um, so I'm glad you brought that up because I forgot to mention it. <laughs> Stand oh, there and like perfect. supervise. That'd be great. That'd yeah. be great. Move that over there. Yeah. Move the that. Okay. <laughs> well, that's great. And I hope everyone will go to familypartnership.org or bgcmanatee.org and find out how to help these two wonderful organizations for the Giving Challenge and beyond. Mm -hmm. Volunteerism, helping mm -hmm. to advance their mission, and also now is the time that we're going to talk about something fabulous. And in fact, what should we call it? What should we call it? Hmm. I'm well, going to we call have it like five minutes left. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to call it Fabulous Finds in Five Minutes. Oh, and catchy. this is when we put our two guests on the spot. Yes. Which, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. why I said don't go anywhere. <laughs> um, because we just talked about how wonderful they are. Now it's time to talk about how wonderful we are. And just remember, anytime you donate or shop at Goodwill, you're actually starting a job and job training for someone who needs it, and especially those with barriers to employment. Yeah. So with this, I'm going to call it Kelly's time. Oh, I thought it was Kelly's Corner. <laughs> well, it's Kelly's Corner. Okay, Kelly's oh. four and a half minutes now. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I always run out of time. It's so much fun. OK, so um, each week, I've been trying to bring you guys something different because we've had a lot of requests. So. Um, this week, we are doing a guessing game. Well, I mean, we always do. But this week, it's actually, I'm going to show you guys a picture, and you're going to tell me what you think is happening in the picture. Okay? <laughs> oh, this is something different. Okay, this, this is, is really okay. new, you guys. I'm very excited about I, I'm this. I'm kind of excited about okay. this. Okay. Scared. All right, we're going to show you the picture. Okay. What? Look at the picture. Um, killing <laughs> no. a <laughs> lawn This ornament. is a non-violent. Oh, okay. Fashionable thing. So is it spray painting a lawn ornament? Is that your guess, Veronica? Oh, okay. I'm Who's not next? playing. I'm Who's sorry. Next? <laughs> um, Katrina, what do you think is happening in this photo? Definitely spray painting mm -hmm. some apes, and <laughs> okay. I think they're going to be ornamental on stairs. Okay. Oh, what do you think, Don? Oh my goodness. I'm really not sure what's going on in I'm that picture. That's, that's exactly the reaction. This is a family show. This is a family, this show. This is a family <laughs> show, everybody. Um, and I just want to point out, if you're over 18, you should, or if you're under 18, you should not even know what spray paint is, okay. unless you have an adult mm. handy. So yes, I just want to make point. that disclaimer. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead and show you the next photo. So basically, at Goodwill, you never know what you'll find. We'll always say this. Um, this is a fun DIY project. One of our fashionistas, Fashionistas Greer tackled this for us. So these aren't your materials. This is what you saw in the picture, spray paint. And we have these two awesome monkeys. Um, on Pinterest, I saw that there was a DIY and it was animal bookends. So we talked about it and I said, can you tackle this? So she found these really cool monkeys at Goodwill for like under $10. 
had the spray paint that she liked in the color of her choice. And so then step one, next photo please. Oh, there it is. So these, this is the before photo. So you find the animals that you like and you can actually add these to a piece of wood if they're not heavy enough by themselves. Um, so you find what you like, step two. I'm really excited about these graphics because I worked really hard on them. So. Uh, so this is actually the picture that you saw before, the spray painting. You're going to want to do this in a well-ventilated area. Again, if you're under 18, please ask an adult for help or I will come help you. No big deal. And then step three, you're going to let them dry and you're going to enjoy. And then we also have a before and after photo as well. So you can see just the before and after. So this is just a really fun way to show you guys a project. Um, I love doing the who paid less and we'll bring that back again as well but this was just a fun thing because diy is so much fun right now everybody <laughs> you know you're getting ready to decorate your dorm room you don't want to spend a lot of money you want to make it your own you can go to goodwill and find really cool things i have a beautiful gold mirror that i found at goodwill in my craft room so I'll bring pictures of that next week because I oh, just cool. thought that would be a great idea I should bring a picture um, but that's just a fun way to make it your own right and and so she went through the bookstore, or not the bookstore, the our regular store, yeah. and said, oh, this is cute. What could I use it for? Mm -hmm. Matched a color to her living room. Yep. Her catching on. I'm items. finally catching on. And then used it as bookends because yeah. it, it normally wasn't a bookend. No, it was just like a weird animal figurine thing. <laughs> thing. Oh, there you go. <laughs> But, but now, that, it's, yeah, a, now it's an after. awesome statement piece, and now you have people come over, and they're like, wow, where can I buy that? You can't. You have to make it <laughs> yeah, from Goodwill. So thank you guys yeah, for playing. Yeah. And that, your, you. your guess was spot on. I mean, you it's didn't close. say bookend. I was waiting for that, but you did a really great job. Thank you. And you can find out more through your blog. <laughs> yes. So um, we have our Reinvent Yourself blog. It goes hand-in-hand hand with our 2015 campaign, Reinvent Yourself. We reinvented these monkeys into yes. something really fabulous. So we have local um, fashionistas who are helping us blog, and we're hoping to add a fashionista in the future. See what I did there? Speak Spanish. Yeah. And um, let me know if Bates. you need help. We got to get him. Oh, Matt so. Bates from mm -hmm. SNN. Yeah, he's yes. great, very stylish. Um, so, so it's just a lot of fun. So check us out on Fridays, Fashion Friday, and then our Reinvent Yourself blog, which is on our website. And if you guys want more, let me know because we have some DIYs planned for the future. Yes. So I like to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, go on experience.org and, and definitely reach out. And thanks to everybody who's sending us their pictures. And, yeah, we love it. Um, and we're gearing up for Halloween. Yes, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, because if you don't go to a Hall or Goodwill for a Halloween costume, yeah. something's wrong. Yeah. Because we have cheap. so much. Oh, yeah, we have a lot. We have a good selection. It's quality. It's awesome. It's also quantity. Quantity. I, I'd like to dress up the whole week during Halloween. I'll probably dress up during our show that month. And with that, thank you, Dawn <laughs> and Katrina, oh, for being yeah. on the yeah. show. Everything you shared with us is extremely helpful. And I hope everyone heard the great news and will join us next week when we have additional good news to share. Thanks for being with us.